Phoenix at Knoebels has won the Golden Ticket Award for the best wooden coaster in the world the past two years. Is it deserving? While I personally don't quite think it's the best wooden roller coaster in the world, it's definitely worthy of the discussion. This coaster is the definition of an airtime machine. And it's crazy to think that we almost lost this coaster. Phoenix originally opened in 1947 as the Rocket at Playland Park in San Antonio, Texas. The coaster was marketed as the largest roller coaster in the world after it opened, even though that wasn't exactly true. This Herbert Schmeck designed Philadelphia Toboggan Company wooden roller coaster stood 78 feet tall and boasted 3,200 feet of track. And by all accounts, it delivered incredible rides. But in 1980, Playland closed, and the rocket sat idle for years. Enter Knobles. At the time, Knobles was a relative unknown to roller coaster enthusiasts. The park was located in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, and in the mid 1980s, Knobles only had a kiddie coaster and a Schwarzkopf Jetstar. In 1984, Knobles made a major splash in the amusement industry. The park purchased the rocket, but since there were no blueprints, the park labeled and cataloged each board on site to ensure the ride could be assembled at its new location. And in 1985, Knobles unveiled the relocated rocket, naming it the Phoenix. And that's a completely fitting name since this coaster literally rose from the ashes after it was left from the scrap heap. Phoenix is located in the very back of Knobles. And because of the ride's modest height, and because of how Knobles is located in the woods, you really can't see Phoenix until you're right in front of it. From inside the park, it's surprisingly difficult to get footage of Phoenix because most of the layout is contained within itself. The best vantage point of this classic wooden coaster can be had on the gasoline alley antique cars that travel around and through the Phoenix. For the 2020 season, Phoenix got a few pluses. First, the coaster got a redesigned station, which was a much deserved upgrade for such a revered coaster. Second, Phoenix got this incredible scale model added adjacent to the entrance. Knobles is clearly proud of their star attraction. Third, Phoenix finally extended its queue line, as it now has some switchbacks extending towards the brake run. In the past, the queue would dump out on the midway. Speaking of lines, even on a busy weekend, I have never had to wait more than 15 to 20 minutes for Phoenix, and usually, I end up waiting much less than that. In general, Knobles has some of the fastest and most efficient operations on the planet. And Phoenix is arguably the best showcase of this. I'm not even exaggerating when I say this, but Knobles can get trains out in 20 to 30 seconds. Their secret? Their restraints. And this is easily the biggest pro with Phoenix. Phoenix has buzz bars. These classic single position lap bars come nowhere close to touching the lap of most riders. I have several inches of room between my lap and the restraint. Buzz bars are becoming exceedingly rare, but you can find them on some older wooden roller coasters. What makes the buzz bar so special in Phoenix is that there is no backup restraint. There is absolutely no seat belts. Almost all the other buzz bar woodies out there have some sort of seat belt, unlike Phoenix. What this means is that when you get airtime on Phoenix, you go flying. It's actually sort of terrifying at points, and I can't help but come off laughing you are gonna fly right into that lap bar. In terms of seat selection, my favorite seat is the front row, although the back is pretty darn good as well. I'll get into this more shortly, but Phoenix is a ride that gets stronger as it progresses. From the fourth hill onward, the airtime is excellent in every single row, but I think it has a little more oomph in the front and back car on those first three hills. If you're towards the middle of the train, the first three hills are just okay. I also want to discuss this coaster's smoothness. This coaster does not ride like it's 75 years old. Phoenix is smoother than most steel coasters. Knobles takes immaculately good care of Phoenix, and even though this coaster has never become the least bit rough, they continuously retrack it to ensure their star attraction maintains its trademark smoothness and fast ride. Phoenix begins with a slow dark tunnel. It's reminiscent of the starts on the giant dippers on the west coast. When you emerge, you start climbing the 78 foot tall lift that runs right up alongside the station. It would be entirely possible to reach your hands out and touch riders in the station. That's how close you are, but definitely heed the park's rules and keep your hands inside the train at all times. Once you crest the lift, you are treated to a 72 foot tall drop. 
In the back, you get some decent floater airtime, but that's just the warm up. That first drop is one of the weakest airtime moments on the ride. That's followed by the first turnaround, and if you're up front, you get standing floater airtime cresting this hill. This is the first of many instances where your thighs will hit that buzz bar. The turnaround has some mild laterals because it's completely unbanked, and then you drop back down to the ground. If you're in the back, you get another dose of decent floater airtime here. That's followed by the third hill, this little speed hill. And this is the one hill on the ride that doesn't really stand out. You fly over this hill, and it's really small in size, so it's sort of perplexing that you don't get something more than just a teeny tiny pop of floater airtime. But it's very much forgivable because Phoenix goes berserk from this point onward. The fourth hill is similar in size to the prior hill, except this one gives a vicious and abrupt pop of ejector airtime. That's followed by the second turnaround. The entrance to this element gives strong floater airtime if you're up front. Strong enough that you will again fly right into that lap bar. And like the first turnaround, this element is completely unbanked. But since you're traveling considerably faster, this turn has some really good laterals. That's especially true if you're in the back row. You are still pressed to the side as you start the descent, and that descent gives some great ejector airtime. Getting a lateral and ejector airtime combo like that with just buzz bars and no seatbelts is pure bliss. That's followed by the double up and double down. The first part of this double up gives some decent floater airtime towards the front of the train, but nothing if you're towards the middle or back. But no worries, as you crest the top of the double down, everyone is sort of thrown forwards, which makes the second half of the double down absolutely wild. Without a moment to collect yourself, you get a dose of powerful ejector airtime on the second half of the double down. I can't help but laugh at this point because of the odd position the ride will often put your body in with those forces. That's followed by the third turnaround, and if you're up front, you get some excellent floater airtime entering this element. You then whip around this unbanked turn, getting pinned to the side of your seat. It's pretty shocking just how quickly Phoenix roars around this turn. And then you drop off this turnaround, giving back row riders some very strong airtime. Phoenix then sets itself up for one of the best finales of any roller coaster. Four back to back to back to back bunny hills with some of the best airtime of any coaster. This finale would still be excellent with typical restraints. You fly over these four hills and get some powerful airtime. But with just buzz bars and no seatbelts, this finale is legendary. Off ride, this finale doesn't even look real as riders are cartoonishly bouncing out of their seat. It looks like people are standing up. And in a way, they sort of are. The airtime is that strong that it will have riders basically standing up in their seat. On ride, people just can't help but cackle at the insanity of this finale. The first bunny hill gives extremely strong floater airtime up front, while the airtime is more of the ejector variety towards the back. The second hill gives powerful ejector airtime up front, and if you're towards the back, this hill gives sort of a double pop of ejector airtime. You get this initial pop cresting the hill, and an even stronger pop on the drop. And keep in mind because of the small size of this hill, those two pops of airtime occur one after another. Then the final two hills, those hills give some of the craziest ejector airtime out there. You will be violently launched into the buzz bar. You then hit the brake run trying to comprehend what just happened. And there really is only one logical thing to do. Run back around and ride again. This is one of my favorite coasters in the world to marathon. It's super re-rideable from its smoothness and the coaster's pacing is impeccable. I love how Phoenix increases in intensity as it goes, ending in a crescendo. So what would I rate Phoenix? If you haven't been able to tell by my glowing review, I'm giving this coaster a perfect 10 out of 10. Phoenix is a masterpiece. Sure you can nitpick that the first three hills aren't perfect if you're not in the very front or very back car, but most of the ride is darn near perfect, and Knobles lets you pick your seat. Outside of Lightning Rod, Phoenix may just have my favorite second half of any coaster. The powerful airtime and incredibly minimalistic restraints always leave me smiling in delight. The only other coaster that I can think gives a somewhat similar experience is the coaster of Peony Playland. You have another ride with no seatbelts and a minimalistic lap bar, except I actually think coaster's airtime is even more terrifying. 
So what are your thoughts on Phoenix? Do you think this coaster lives up to its lofty reputation? I would love to hear your comments about this PTC Woody down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for listening.